Hello bubble gummies and welcome to another making of a bubblegum monster. Now first of all if you just come here from somewhere else to search and you wonder what a bubble gummy is, basically all a bubble gummy is is a subscriber that's subscribed to our channel Bubblegum Monsters. So if you want to become a bubble gummy then all you have to do is subscribe now. The benefits of becoming a bubble gummy as well are we give out prizes to our subscribers so you can win things like 3D printed badges of the Bubblegum Monster logo and also we give away sometimes some of our 3D prints of our Bubblegum Monsters so this one is Steve from uh, Minecraft or even Mr. President Donald Trump. Unfortunately I can't do a live stream of making a Bubblegum Monster today either because I've got quite a lot to do tonight so I've had to pre-record this but all the same I hope you enjoy it just as much. So as you can probably tell from the background, today's Bubblegum Monster is going to be Spider-Man. The movie was released last week, so what better way to celebrate than creating our very own Bubblegum Monster version. So without further ado, let's get going. Okay, so for this, what I did instead of my normal way of doing stuff, where I just start with a sphere, I was already actually started making this, um, so it sort of jumped in halfway through. But I was using what's called Z sphere or Z spheres in America, and they're basically like well, they're spheres, and then you can sort of like join them together and make this kind of like well, it looks like a little monkey at the moment. But you just keep pulling out shapes, and they're just made up of lots of different spheres, and it's just a really good way of getting a basic shape together of a human of a human figure or any anything really, but. For this obviously this is spider-man so i was trying to i was trying to what i was trying to do is get him into a pose that i would like um that i could then build on so the advantage of this is he's already in a, in a good pose by doing this i can get him into a quite a nice pose the disadvantage is whereby usually i do stuff using symmetry um which means that when you do one side it automatically does the other side because he's not symmetrical at all it mean, means that now where I'm sculpting, I have to do each side individually. So whereas if I sculpted, like say, the shoulder muscle on the left hand side in symmetry mode, it would automatically do the shoulder muscle on the right. With this mode, it was I had to have to do the shoulder muscle on the left and then do the shoulder muscle on the right. So it was a right pain, but it's good in a way because it just gives it that kind of natural kind of asymmetrical look. But also really challenging because to still get it to look completely right is difficult now i'm not an expert on the human anatomy by any stretch of the imagination i know a bit i know enough to kind of get around roughly where everything is but there's people out there that are just amazing and will know every single muscle in fact what i'd recommend is if you do want to get into sculpting especially humans have a look up at a guy called Scott Eaton. He um, he's a brilliant um, a sculptor, and especially with human anatomy, he knows so much about it. He studied in, he studied in Italy. He's a real expert, and he came when I used to work in a game studio. He came to the studio, and we did a two-day course. I mean, this was back in 2010. So that is really my knowledge of the human anatomy it was from like seven years ago. Um, obviously, the anatomy doesn't change, but my brain hasn't managed to maintain all of the information needed um, but I, I kind of knew enough the problem is I know it from a kind of basic stance like a sort of like standing up front on stance and with the spider-man pose here he's in a really unique position and, and the problem with the anatomy is that it's one thing knowing where the muscles are and how they join to the bones it's another thing knowing how the bones rotate exactly where the, like for example the shoulder blades how they rotate and then how the muscles change on the back to sort of accommodate that difference in shape and that's something I really is completely out of my league and I was trying my best here to just kind of get it right but I was really struggling actually with the, the chest area because of the way he's sort of reaching down to touch the floor his um, his um, his pecs were kind of like one was stretched and one was compressed and it was just like trying to get that to look right was a real struggle i think here i'm trying to do i'm just trying to shorten his forearm a little bit it was just, just a little bit long um because with the z spheres at the beginning it's good to get a basic shape but as you sort of bulk stuff out you start sort of seeing that things aren't quite right so it's just a case of constantly going over the the um 
the model. So here I'm just putting these abs in and um, just trying to get them to look correct. Um, and now I'm going into the legs here, just tidying them up and sort of building in some of the muscle structure around the top part of the leg before then going into the bottom part where, because with the Z fit it was a really chunky, big square shape, I'm just sort of carving out the calves. And I think then I start to then work on his foot as well. And again, with the whole symmetrical thing, the tool is brilliant, but when it's like this with a pose that's completely different on either side, I knew that I'd have to spend ages on this side and then do exactly the same on the other side. Um, but anyway, it's always good to do things twice, at least you learn a little bit more each time. Um, here I'm trying to do the knee. Um, the interesting with, thing with the knee is it's actually quite flat on the front and also on the side. So I was just trying to get that sort of like obvious sort of indent that you get with the knee. And then the front, the, uh, the bone that goes all the way down to the foot as well. Luckily, he's got his shoes on, so I didn't have to worry about his toes because that's like, like fingers. Fingers and toes are always a pain because obviously there's 10 fingers and 10 toes. That's 20 different objects basically you'd have to sculpt if you were spending all that time on each one. So here I'm doing the left foot now, I think, um, or left leg. And again, just kind of trying to work out where the muscles go. Now, one tip, and this is something that actually Scott Eaton taught us, was that first of all it's really important to learn where the bones are where the joints of your bones are because the muscles attach to those key parts of your body so for example your collarbone um, there's the, there's some key muscles that go from your neck at the back of your ears down to them then also your, sh uh, your shoulders your shoulder bones basically where your clavicle ends your shoulder bone starts clavicle is your um, collarbone and then your elbows, your wrists, and then your knees, and your pelvis. All of them have got points where all the muscles kind of collect, like a junction in a road. They all just kind of um, attach to those points because obviously you need the muscles to move the bone. So it you know, obviously totally makes sense. Um, but they're really good because the bones generally jut out in a certain part of, the, uh, of, of your body. So like, again, the clavicles or the cloak, the uh, collarbones, you can see them, they're the bits at the top, just below you, your chin, the, there's two little sort of like um, bones that sort of, um, just sit below your chin, at the bottom of your neck, um, and the, sort of the top of your ribs. That's your collar bones, and they're really good for working out where your neck and your tricep muscles then attach to the end of them. So um, it's really, um, sorry, yeah, not tricep, uh, trapezius muscles attached to the end of them as well and then and then your biceps then go down to your el like where you're basically where your elbows are and then you can just kind of work out where everything goes um roughly but like i say i'm definitely not an expert and so it's um really hard for me as especially because i don't do the anatomy very often at all like literally probably once every year or something like that um as you know, if you've watched any of my bubblegum and stuff, usually most of the stuff we do is kind of cartoon stuff. So it isn't easy for me at all. And um, and it's a good exercise to do. And it's something that is the good thing about the anatomy is it never it never changes. Because obviously, you know, we as humans, that is the way we're made up. And when it does change in a few thousand years, you won't need to worry about it because you won't be around. So that's all cool. Um, here I'm doing the fingers. I noticed they're quite long, so I was trying to sort of just adjust the size of them. In fact, this I'm still not happy with the final product of this hand. It just never came out right, but I was under quite a sort of um, tight deadline doing this, so I've just kind of left it as it is at the end. Um, but anyway, I spent quite a while on this. It just, it just seemed to take ages. There's just certain bits that the bits that I thought would be easy just end up being all right, and then the bits that I thought... Um, would be difficult. Sorry, the bits that I thought would be easy were really difficult, and the bits that I thought would be difficult were were not easy, but they just seemed to come together a lot easier than what I thought. Um, so yes, yeah, so now you can see this hand has just given me loads of jib, jib. It just took me ages to get it right. Um, but anyway, here I'm sort of fattening up the fingers a little bit because they were a little sort of um, thin and sausage-like, so I was just trying to give them a bit more definition. 
Uh, fingers are actually quite tricky because they are quite basic, but they have got enough structure that if you don't get them to look it's kind of right, they just look like sausages. So I'm, I'm, I'm adding, I'm doing the um, the lats and the the shoulders again, just trying to build in the muscle structure in the back. The back's quite complex actually, and I, I, I'm again, I'm not an expert on the back, but I know roughly where the muscles are. And also, I was refer, referring to an anatomy model I've got as well, which is also useful. Um, but like I said earlier, because of the positioning, you kind of have to work out how the shoulder blades have rotated and things like that. So now I've upped the detail a little bit and I'm adding in, this has given me enough sort of um, detail to add in things like his eyes a little bit more. And I started to then start doing the um, the lines. Now I suddenly realised this is going to take ages as well, because again, I haven't got symmetry on. So I was like, great, I'm going to have to totally draw every single individual line of his web-like costume. Um, I don't think in the time lapse, I don't think I've done it all. I think I've got about sort of like, I basically did the head. And I thought, well, I'm not going to bore you guys with just doing all this. So the final bit has all of the, all of the lines in, but I just I just did the first part here. Because I was kind of now happy with the, the most of it. Yeah, so there you go. And that was it. And here's the final uh, turntable with the, uh, with the lines in the costume. And a render. So that was pretty tricky, actually. There was a lot of things going on there. You had the human anatomy, which is always difficult. Now, I'm definitely no expert of the hu human anatomy. I did like a two-day course on it years and years ago. Um, and even then, in a standard pose. So when you've got a kind of really difficult pose like Spidey was in where he was crouching down, there's just a whole host of different problems in that. Even if you know the anatomy, kind of, the bone structure is in a different place, so the muscles are stretching your um, shoulder blades are rotating differently and there's a there's loads of problems with it um, so it's not perfect um, but I was kind of pleased with how it came out uh, the other thing to remember as well is that's all time lapse so although the whole thing kind of looked like it was like seven minutes long it's actually I think it in total was probably about four and a half five hours of, of work um, so quite a long time but anyhow I hope you enjoyed it and until next time bye bye